so, what we need to do now is some magic. We want to open the ruler magic menu. We wish to go to the necromancy area, with which we are a legendarily equipped. And we wish to do the magical project of Lichdom. The path to Lichdom is dark and unholy one, one that only the most desperate or power-hungry spellcasters take, not for the love of their magical craft, but for the chance to live forever. If successful, the dark supplicant becomes a lich, an immortal undead spellcaster that retains its intelligence and personality. With the opportunity, the skill, and all the time in the world to master all forms of magic. What we're going to do right now is try and become a lich. And we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it succeeds first time. News from Aelantir has arrived, spread widely by the order of chroniclers and proclaimed by Telemite criers in every major town. In a ruined precursor temple, a mural with chilling implications. A scene of utter destruction and ruin, a great fireball rising from the middle of a continent, raining stone and lightning down onto the land. Off to one side, a man is seen descending from the clouds. He wields a scepter in one hand and is extending his other arm in an effort to contain the explosion, lightning striking towards him as he does so. The extended arm terminates in a stump instead of a hand, and a great silver cloak covers his left side and partially obscures his missing leg. The artist's inscriptions have been partially translated, and our scholars believe they label the figure Castellar, God of the Sky, and the explosion denoted simply as the end. The documents of discovery and rubbings of the murals are widespread across Kanor, and are spreading like a wildfire through scholarly halls and elite circles in Halkan. In Laurentain and Gowton, Anbincost and Selmaldor, and even the ruins of Castanath, the rumours are starting to swirl. The Precursor Elves saw Castellos die, and wrote down what they saw so we would know. Hmm. Should I leave my scepter behind? Castellos reigns... Hmm. What else does Aelintia have to reveal? What else? The Pute of Lichdom is what else. You have the book. Give it here, I must have it. Wizard King Zamarzu. The pursuit of such dark majesty is a hard and fraught one. Such a quest requires immense knowledge, and one must first begin by discovering how a properly motivated wizard might ascend in the first place. So... Do I hire some adventurers? Do I use state resources to investigate? Or do I research it myself? I'll research it myself. I'll research it myself. Here lies Gradolf, found in a box he wasn't looking, got lichpox. The epitaph of a diseased adventurer, Gradolf Flixis. With the discovery of the dark knowledge required to achieve lichdom, it's revealed that the very foundation of such a dark gift lies within a phylactery. A phylactery is some form of container which stores a lich's soul, typically something small and easy to transport or hide, for if the phylactery is destroyed, then the lich will perish with it. The first step for any would-be lich is to craft such a wondrous item. Uh, so an amulet capable of containing a small object or a ornate jewel-encrusted box. I think spending more here is probably the way forward. We'll take a jewel-encrusted box. The life so short, the craft so long in learning. Altonius Hammercraft, High Balgar Smith. A phylactery must be engraved with enormous amounts of magical notation in order to hold the would-be lich's spirit and allow them to cast spells upon it. So scribe dark spells on tiny magical scrolls to put inside, carve on holy runes on the interior walls and fill them with liquefied dame's deer, or coat the insides with enchanted blood of a magical beast. I like the idea of carving unholy runes on the thing. That just sounds cool to me. The soul is a volatile and fragile thing. Bereft of a body, most of them move on to the next life. Most. Arguably the most important and delicate step in the path to lichdom is the lengthy process of enchanting the phylactery to become a suitable home for the immortal ruler's soul, turning it into a beacon for their dark essence that calls more strongly than the allure of the afterlife. The mind, after all, may not want to move on, but the blind and dumb soul has fewer qualms, and so must be safely entrapped for the rest of eternity. Oh boy, here we go. 
Let's perform the dark enchantments. How long does this lich thing take? It feels like we've been waiting forever. Some rulers don't live long enough to do the event chain. Yeah, no, I can I can totally see why that would be the case. I mean, we're 57. We What a fucking trash set of traits. Like for real though. It's disgusting actually. It's actually I don't like it at all. What? The souls that don't move on, well, normally they're harmless. Sure, they'll make a lot of noise, eat a few cats, maybe try a revenge on their killer, but all you really need to do is make them realize they're dead and resolve whatever is holding them to this plane. The transformation potion is essentially an extraordinarily toxic magical potion that must instantly kill the spellcaster upon imbibing. If they live, or if they linger for even a moment, the transformation will fail and the drinker will perish without attaining lichdom. It has a wide variety of different ingredients, but needs a primary catalyst of poison. Which one do you aim for? Queen's Belladonna, Helena's Tears, or Fae Touched Hemlock? We go with the more expensive one. I feel like that just makes more sense. Ten blooms of Fae Touched Hemlock. The more expensive one's surely more potent and will, you know, work better, right? Poisoning yourself for immortality, that makes sense. Apparently it does. We ain't gonna question it. We just gonna apparently do it. You won't tell until later. Oh, that that's ominous as fuck, my dude. Actually ominous as fuck. I've heard that if you choose all the most expensive options, it's most likely to succeed, but I've never tried it myself, so I take it with a grain of salt. Does the salt help with the hemlock, or what what are we talking here? Is there is there some extra Extra dealy if you put some salt in it as well. See, I'm not much of a fan of salty things, so I mean, putting that in my poison doesn't seem like a good idea to me. You spend all your money on hemlock, it's totally normal. I believe it is totally normal. Hemlock is a perfectly reasonable and normal thing to purchase lots of. Fuck me. <laughs> that scared me. I thought Verena had died. It's only Aldred. Fucking hell. I mean, a charismatic sorcerer. Like, clearly. Why is it 10% chance of air as a powerful mage? Like, why only 10%? Inexperienced but powerful mage. There we go. Adela. Trade efficiency. Sure. So we've got safeguard holy sites. It's our holy duty to look after the holy pilgrimage sites under our control and protect any pilgrims within our lands. We must combat heresy in the mission to spread the true faith. We must never waver in our conviction and be ready to root out heresy wherever it springs up. Or the expulsion of heathens. As our state grows, so too does our exposure to wrongful teachings. We must not tolerate heathens or heretics within our walls. Instead, these people can come and live in our cities only if they convert to the true faith. Uh, yeah, let's expel the heathens. Ooh, White Walls Black Empire. With the first step, our claim has been staked. We announced to the world our intentions. We've made it clear that the White Walls belong to our empire alone. Damn fucking straight they do. That gives me permanent claims on... Oh, 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 oh fuck yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. You gotta love yourself some fucking perma claims. Let's go. The ones that scare me are those who choose to become who they are. There's no reasoning with that kind of insanity. The transformation potion is no simple potion, and in fact requires another deadly catalyst. Three glam... glams? Grams of black dames, dear. Six drops of neurotic asp venom, or one tincture of wyvern blood. See, now, Binzy in Twitch chat has fucked me up. Because I'm like, oh, I'll just do all of the more expensive ones. Clearly, right? Logically... That means I got the best chance. Right? And then he's there in chat with... No, oh, I'll tell you after. Like, fuck you, my dude! <laughs> fuck you! No! I need to know! I need to know! I w <laughs> mm. 
I like the idea of Black Dame's Tear. Like, I didn't know it existed in 1530, not gonna lie. I thought the whole Black Dame's Tear thing came about much later with the, uh, uh as Jakuma. Don't take the Black Dame's Tear in chat. It's anti-magic. That's a fucking fact. Black Dame's Tear is anti-magic. But this potion is trying to kill me. Does imbibing wyvern blood generally kill a man? Or a woman? Or a, a vampire? Or whatever the fuck we are? Don't take it. Increase the fail chance. Black Dame's Tear increases the fail chance. I just... I just want... I just want to become a lich. I just want to become a lich. I think Black Dame's Tear is out, right? It is anti-magic. And we're doing a magic thing. So we want to keep the anti-magic shit away from the magic thing. When in doubt, go the middle route. That's a fucking good point. I like just the, the, the straightforward spoilers coming in at the end there. The most expensive ones give you the best chance to become a lich. Just straight up, no, no ifs or buts about it. Just yeah, no, you just do this one. <laughs> oh, great. All right. Hey, merchants, fund my death. In fairness, I have been going with the most expensive ones so far already. If Black Dame's tier is toxic, does that mean regular Dame's tier is also toxic? I mean, look, it gives you plus three unrest. Clearly, it's toxic. Dame's Tear is basically fucking Weird Stone, or uh, Warp Stone, from Warhammer. It's just blue instead of green. Like, that's that's basically the difference. Regular Dame's Tear made gnomes? Exactly! It's super fucking toxic! It takes a regular man and makes him the size of a shoe. Here we go. Here we go. The vessel must be as dark and accursed as the path of lichdom itself, so no ordinary glass bottle will do. Necromantic Tactics, a common inquisitorial training guide on lichdom and its accompanying signs. Once the transformation potion's contents are complete, it must be transferred into a special container specifically made for the purposes of lichdom. Such a container must be dark and accursed, Created of only the vilest means and materials. So do we rip out the heart of an innocent, or do we take the horn of a unicorn? I'm gonna take the horn of a unicorn, because that sounds fucking dark. Whew. A man's home is his castle, and a lich's ritual chamber is her home. It should be decorated as such. As every good mage knows, preparation is half the battle. The dark ritual of lichdom is a dangerous undertaking, and the ritual chamber must be prepared accordingly, with several overlapping magical circles, enchanted ornaments, and appropriately ornate pedestal on which to place the phylactery. We'll make the preparations. Becoming a lich is like a thousand uh, monarch points of each, right? This is like a pretty crazy amount of, of cost. It is both ironic and sad. Your liches come so close to enlightenment before they throw it all away on the dark altar of earthly immortality. The Halesi Guru. Once all preparations are complete, the supplicant must then cleanse their body and soul of all burdens of worldly flesh. This often requires years of voluntary deprivation to evoke a state of near death and mindlessness. Fuck me. I know we're going really slow with our with our conquest, and maybe we could go a bit faster, but I really want this lich thing to work. And I don't want to compromise it in any way. <gasps> so long have I waited for this moment, no matter the consequence, no matter the pain, I will not falter. When the time is ready, the supplicant must stand inside their ritual chamber next to the phylactery and drink the transformation potion. If they don't drink it fast enough, or they don't die immediately, the body and soul will fail to separate fully, and the lich-to-be will die permanently. <laughs> Let's go! Let's fucking go! It is done! 
The pain is truly terrible. The poison scours your bones and the ritual tears your spirit from its earthly vessel. Every inch of your body feels as though it's burning, freezing and evaporating all at once. But finally the pain fades and you are still standing. The next few days are quiet ones. Spent assessing your new existence alone in your chambers. Your new body looks much like your old one. Though you no longer feel the pangs of hunger or thirst, nor any other distracting mortal urge. Your flesh already hangs loosely from your bones due to the emancipation or sorry, emaciation of your long cleansing. Given enough time, it will eventually slough away and leave only your polished skeleton behind. You will be a perfect being in body, as well as in mind and soul. Immortality is mine. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Your magical infamy will increase by a large amount. Your magical infamy will increase by a large amount. Your magical infamy will increase by a large amount. Your magical infamy will increase by a large amount. And indeed, your magical infamy will increase by a large amount. <laughs> oh, nice. It fucking re-rolled it! Okay, now I'm fucking saving. Because I'm gonna actually have a good fucking stat. I don't give a shit. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a shit. We're getting a good fucking stat. We got it! You know, I'll, do, I'll take well connected. Well connected is pretty fucking good. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. It's pretty good. Yeah, alright. Alright. Cool, 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 cool. Cool, 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 cool. <sighs> Delightful. It is said that the wheel need not be reinvented, and indeed, with Kenrick's text, we see his own experiences with lichdom, as well as his collected memoirs of other notable liches, such as the lich king Zamarzu, and even Morgorex I. It's quite humbling, really, that even with all the power and the vast evil needed to achieve lichdom, that our predecessors all kept journals of their initial days and lamentations. What's important, however, are the regimens and rituals they used to make the most of their first few years as masters of undeath. I just gain stats. We're now of six, four, six. That's something I'll take. Hells yes. Crown of the Damned. I need to be a lich for 120 years. All right, cool, 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 cool. Well, now that we are a lich, we will open the ruler magic menu and we will go into the necromancy spells and we will raise an army of the undead to match our own perfect immortal undead selves. Let's go. Your magical infamy will increase by a massive amount. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it be the recently deceased or the dedicated charnel houses, a powerful necromancer can raise a vast army of undead servants capable of defeating and consuming any army on the battlefield. Damn fucking right I can. <laughs> rise, rise, my zombie horde. <laughs> During the Green Tide, our mages were an unwelcome but critical part of the fight. Others looked away from our tactics of raising both friend and foe from the dead to even the odds against the orcish threat. But none can deny what we did, what we had to do, and without us, Corin would never have gotten close to Castanath to slay the orc Corgus Dukinson. With the massacres of the Corgus Dukinson's people complete, our policy of waste not, want not, should take effect. After all, there's now plenty of material to work from, and the basis of our armies, after all. All the orcs were ever good for was fighting. <laughs> Let's go! Let's fucking go! <laughs> Verena has made herself known as a powerful practitioner of magic, and one unbound by the shackles of old laws and regulations. Or, as the Anben Costa sycophants call it, a witch king. The international community sees Verena as a power mad leader of a pariah state and an outcast amongst the diplomatic circles of the world. But who cares? A lion does not concern itself with the opinion 
of sheep. Kneel before me! Ah! Cover is in a coalition like I give a shit! If you liked the video, please help me out and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Maybe leave a comment down below too, it really does help out the channel. If you have the means and are willing to, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. It's the best way to support me and the effort that goes into creating the content you've just watched and hopefully will continue to watch, and allows me to focus more on making videos without the stress and worry of another meteor striking my channel, be it hacks, demonetization, or the third adpocalypse. You can also support me by heading over to Twitch and following there, or joining my Discord and being an active member of the community. All those links are in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.